dubscupseries.com. Welcome to the SES Post Race Show for a very eventful 250 lap Martinsville Xfinity race to say the least. Now I'm tired. We'll run through the Ty Gibbs thing, we'll run through the results and the standings. Um, first off, quality of the race. This was an alright race. Not the best racing. A lot of cautions, a lot of bunch ups, a, a huge pile up, a red flag, a lot of wrecks. This is what, this in the Truck Series race is what NASCAR will use in their promotional footage for the series, for NASCAR as a whole. They got promotional footage for years out of this race um now for the fight thing y'all know i'm kind of a tag Gibbs fan i think he's the best prospect in the sport since kyle larson i think he's the best prospect in the sport maybe ahead of zane smith i didn't like the way he handled the fight i like the way that he said that he knows he's not on the other side of things with the sam mayer incident he didn't handle the fight well throwing punches with your helmet on and the other guys is helmet off it's not Right, you know, kind of a punk thing to do. Um, I still support him, though. I still think he's a great driver. Um, he dominated this race, led 196 to 250 laps. was probably the most deserving driver of the win. But, you know, what they say in NASCAR, deserves ain't got nothing to do with it. Two wins, end of the day. No matter how they come by that win, they won fair and square, and, you know, they get the win. So, Brendan Jones does win this race. Um, kind of a surprise winner, kind of did pull an Alex Bowman, you know, kind of came out of nowhere. Um, Landon Castle second, he needed a good run. On the outside, looking into the playoffs by like three or four spots, comes in and grabs a big win. AJ Allmendinger third, Austin Hill fourth. I've been saying this, Hill, he's got to get better at non-super speedway races. He's got to get better at ovals and road courses. He was a no-show in the Dash for Cash, ended up like 20th at Richmond last week. Comes out here, gets top five. Sam Mayer fifth, even without the whole controversy thing. That was a very impressive run. Riley Herbst ends up sixth. Two good runs in a row. Couldn't get that dash for cash. AJ Allman, they grabbed that extra hundred grand. Um, Ryan Truex seventh, impressive run for him. Ty Gibbs eighth. Ryan Sieg in ninth, and I believe he's still in the playoff picture. How about that? Jeremy Clements with Eric Estep on the car gets a top ten. Dale Jr. eleventh. This was the biggest story, at least at the start of the race. It was Dale Jr. He comes in and runs these things consistently every single year. How about Parker Retzloff? Finishes 12th. I said this in Truck's poetry show. I was listening to the Xfinity race on the radio, and I heard them say Parker Retzloff was leaking oil and stuff all over the track. He ends up 12th. I don't I believe these are his first two races, but the last two weeks he's been impressive on these Virginia short tracks. Hemrick 11th, Alfredo 14th, LeBay 15th, Weatherman 16th in that 34. Glad to see that 34 run up front. I have the utmost respect for Jesse Wooji for serving this country um, and for teaming up with Emmett Smith. But I, I think he's probably right to maybe take a few weeks off, maybe get a few pointers. You know, um, I think he's definitely capable of driving well in the Truck and Xfinity Series. He might just need a few pointers. I don't know. But Bailey Curry ends up 17th, Matt Mills 18th, Josh Berry 19th. A little disappointed in him. Also disappointed in Noah Gregson. Gene Motorsports really just didn't have it. They didn't have a ton of speed. Derek Griffith 21st. Jade Buford, 22nd, David Starr, 23rd, Myatt Snyder, 24th, Ryan Vargas, 25th, Joe Graff Jr., 26th, 07, no speed without SHR backing and Custer in it. Uh, Shane Lee, 27th, Stefan Parsons, 28th, he made a big splash in qualifying. Uh, Justin Allgaier, 29th, like I said, Jaron just didn't have it. Sheldon Creed was running up front, led some laps. He ends up 30th, JJ Ailey, 31st, Jeb Burton, 32nd. Mason Massey, 33rd. Brandon Brown, 34th. He came in close to the playoff cut line. That did not help him at all. Natalie Decker, 35th. Howie DiSavano, 36th. Then Moffitt and Poole ended up. Let's look at these standings real quick. Take a quick look at these things. 
I believe Almendinger is still leading the points. I believe he has eight top tens in these eight races. It's pretty impressive. It really is. Do that in any series. Be a perfect eight for eight in terms of top tens. And very consistent, great average finish. And um, I still think I'd pick Gibbs to win the championship right now. But Almendinger and Gregson are in my championship four. So yeah, Almendinger leads the points by 20 over Ty Gibbs. And you got Noah Gregson, 42 back. Gregson, Jones, Gibbs, and Almendinger, as well as Austin Hill. Locked into the playoffs, obviously, you know, Cole Custer, not an Xfinity driver, so he's not locked in. Um, but, yeah, uh, Almendinger, Gibbs, Gregson, Jones, Josh Berry, the first non-locked-in driver. He is fifth in points, and you got Sam Mayer, who is sixth, Allgaier, seventh, Hemrick, eighth, Ryan Sieg, ninth, Austin Hill, tenth, Riley Herbst, eleventh, Landon Castle. He's only in by 15 points over Anthony Alfredo, but, boy, that was big, a big finish to get him into the playoffs right now. Remember when I said that a bad finish hurting Brennan Brown? It really did. He's 27 out now and 14th in the points. Then you got Sheldon Creed, 15th in the points. He was looking strong. Bad finish hurts him a little bit here for the playoff picture. Jeb Burton, 16th. Brett Moffitt, 17th. Jeremy Clements, 18th. LeBay, Snyder, Yaley, all the rest are on NASCAR.com. So anyway, what did I think overall about this race? Solid racing product. A lot of cautions. A lot of drama, but like I said, NASCAR will use um, this this fight scene, this dramatic finish, in promotional footage for Martinsville, for the Xfinity Series, for short track races, for NASCAR in general. For Ty Gibbs, and probably for Sam Mayer, and maybe even Castle, since he kind of instigated the incident getting into Mayer, um, they're going to use this footage for years to come. And it, it, it's good for the sport to have some publicity like this. I saw this on Bleacher Board and stuff. I don't think Ty Gibbs handled the fight very well. Like I said, I think he handled the interview a bit better, saying, you know, he knows, you know, he kind of races like that. He's self-aware, like Eric Eastep said, but he's got to tone down the aggressiveness. He, I know he's 19, but he has to act not more his age. He has to act older than his age. He has to act a bit more mature. If he's going to have all this talent, if he's going to get in the Cup Series in a year or two, you, you can't race dirty, but you also just can't race kind of willy-nilly. You know, it's kind of like Chris likes the Arkansas basketball point guard. You know, I don't know how many Razorback fans are there, but he was kind of out of control this season. It's kind of how I feel Ty Gibbs is. All the talent in the world, but when it doesn't work out, you get people questioning you. When it does work out, you're a genius. And I believe he's probably the most talented prospect in NASCAR since Larson or since Kyle Busch or Ryan Blaney or Rick Jones or whoever you want to say. Um, but he's got a few things to work on, like maturity, like how he handles, handles interviews, how he handles controversies, how he handles fights. Um, and he's got a great teacher. He's got a great grandfather teacher him, that legendary Joe Gibbs. I'm sure he's worked with fights and stuff with football and, and NASCAR, but just turn on the aggressiveness, and you'll be a great driver. So that's about all I got. Make sure you like the video, comment down below, subscribe to the channel. We are one away from 175, 26 away from 200, on the road to 200 subscribers right now. And share the channel, share the video with your family, friends, or anyone you know who likes NASCAR. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Sam with from Subscribe.com. God bless. Peace out. Bye. Subscribe. Here's a point. 7,000 RPM. Where everything fades. The machine becomes weightless. Just disappears. And all that's left is a body moving through space and time. 7,000 RPM. That's where you meet it. You feel it coming. It creeps up on you close in your ear.